My first excavation here at the Fountain of Youth Park was in 1976. We thought we were studying a Tamuqua village that was in contact with the Spaniards uh, when they first arrived. The site has been excavated by archaeologists since the 1950s and it had always been assumed that this was uh, a native town. We found artifacts that were Spanish mixed with Native American, but we assumed that those were evidence of, of trade with Spaniards or adopting Spanish traits. And it wasn't until uh, actually the 1980s when we realized that this may actually be, have been the original Menendez settlement. Uh, and that was when we found the Barrow Wells. It's where they got their water. Those are, uh, have never been known to be used even in a historic Native American community. And uh, that along with the archeological evidence led us to think about it in a different way and think of it as a Spanish town. And so we started digging in different directions. And at that point, we were able to uncover the buildings and look at the whole town plan. We found features that had uh, very clear Spanish uh, elements in them, the military buttons and uh, jewelry items for Spanish women, uh, the child's figa. We're standing uh, in the center of what was the 1565 settlement of Pedro Menendez de Aviles and his Spanish settlers. If you can imagine behind me, 450 years ago, this was a Spanish village. We'd be looking at it from the waterfront. The people who came here and lived in the village uh, were all Spanish. They came directly from Spain and there were 800 who arrived here. Only 26 of them were women. The rest were soldiers or sailors. Uh, we think that there were some children. In addition to all the people from Spain, there were people that had been shipwrecked on Florida's coasts over the previous 20 years. And one of Menendez's prime objectives was to help some of these shipwreck victims. And in fact, Menendez's son himself had been in a ship that wrecked off the Florida coast and he was hoping to find some word of his own son, uh, which he didn't do, but he did pick up nearly 20 people over the course of his voyages who came to live here at the community, including uh, several people of African heritage. They built their settlement and houses here in this large field on the edge of the water. And we think that the town was organized around a central space like a plaza. And this is interesting to us because when Pedro Menendez and his settlers arrived, there was a Tamuqua Indian town in this area. And the Native Americans were also organized around a central plaza. The Tamuquan Indians walked in Florida long before Europeans claimed it for their kings. They were a sophisticated people. But this sophisticated group vanished. So what we know of the Tamuqua now only comes from European documents and from archaeological finds, much of which is stored in museums and collection buildings at the University of Florida. This is what the collection from the Fountain of Youth looks like. The Tamuqua lived in circular homes made of thatch and in organized communities where it was not unusual for the chief to be a woman. And on top of that... The Tamuqua were a matrilineal society, meaning that descent was traced through one's mother. When Pedro Menendez arrived in 1565 and founded St. Augustine, the Tamuqua greeted him and his 800 travelers. You know, that was one of those interesting moments in world history that we really have to appreciate, this collision between old world and, and new world. The Tamuquan chief gave his village and his own house to the Spanish to kindle a relationship. And the Spanish and Tamuqua lived alongside each other for months at what is now the Fountain of Youth Park. For the Americas proper, it was the first time that a European population merged with a Native American population and lived together for that long. But after about six months or so, the hostilities grew between the two groups. Eventually, the Tamuqua population plummeted. Populations uh, crashed. When the Spanish arrived, there were possibly 200,000 Tamuqua. Just 200 years later, there were fewer than 100. 
Historians say epidemic disease introduced by the Europeans was the biggest threat to the Temuco survival. It was that quiet pestilence. So what ended up happening to them 200 years after Menendez landed? When Spain ceded Florida to Great Britain, the Spanish packed up and left. The Spanish took the less than 100 Tamuqua and other natives to Cuba. If there are any Tamuqua left in the world today, it is likely that they live in Cuba. Now, 450 years after Menendez met the Tumuqua, research is underway in Cuba to know if any Tumuqua descendants remain. And the Fountain of Youth Park is rebuilding that first vital Tumuqua and Spanish settlement. It's part of an effort to remember the people who used to walk this land for thousands of years, but who no longer do. Some have called the mission of priests a journey of faith. 450 years ago, September 8th, Christianity became firmly planted in what is now the United States. Pedro Menendez founded St. Augustine with hundreds of people and four priests. Remember, there have been several expeditions before Menendez to Florida, um, but they failed for one reason or another. Part of Menendez's deal with the Spanish monarchy was to claim land for Spain and set up the Catholic Church to bring the Catholic Christian faith to the Native Americans. And that was no small feat. Eventually, hundreds of Franciscan priests arrived in St. Augustine and fanned out into the wilderness to start mission sites, often unaware of what or who they would encounter. What happens is they get here and then they start to be brought out to little villages, often accompanied by uh, soldiers. But sometimes priests say they were alone as they walked to the next mission or to start a mission. That's part of the reason why this story is so marvelous. The priests set up schools and taught and preached to the Native Americans in Florida along a trail that extended as far west as Pensacola and as far north as the Carolinas. But the Spanish were not here for solely missionary purposes. This truly was a military outpost and there was a lot of struggles, a lot of sacrifices. It was very messy. When the British took over Florida for a mere 20 years in 1763, Catholicism declined. But the Spanish eventually returned to Florida and Catholicism grew, but historians say not with the same fervor that it had in Florida's first 200 years. 